Welcome biologists, this session we're going to take a look at the formation of tissue fluid. So tissue fluid forms in the capillary area of our tissues and the reason for this is because we have a closed circulatory system, the blood cannot leave our capillaries. So in order for substances containing oxygen and nutrients to reach our cells, they have to leave our blood through tissue fluid, in tissue fluid. And we're going to look at how that is formed. So first of all, the blood comes from the heart, through the arteries and into the arterioles. Now the blood here is under a high pressure. So as the blood enters into the capillary network at the arterial end of the capillary, the, the blood pressure here is under a high hydrostatic pressure. Now the key thing here is you've got to use comparative statements. So the hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end of the capillary is higher than at the venual end of the capillary. Um, and the arterial pressure here, the pressure, hydrostatic pressure is higher than the oncotic pressure. Now oncotic pressure is the pressure that is a result of osmosis. So we'll look at that in a tiny bit more shortly. But at this part here, the arterial end of the capillary, the oncotic pressure is lower than that of the hydrostatic pressure. So therefore, fluid is forced out of the capillary through the fenestrations, um, taking with it oxygen and nutrients. So the key things here are popping up uh, are directly from the MART scheme. Okay, so we've got things like water, dissolved solutes, glucose, amino acids are forced out of the capillaries through fenestrations. It, these fenestrations, these are the small gaps within the capillary wall. You cannot say holes, you get zero marks for saying holes. Our blood vessels do not have holes in them, they have fenestrations or gaps. Now, things like large proteins from red blood cells, they stay within the blood, they stay within the capillary. And what they do is they reduce the water potential. So as a as a as a result of the water potential being reduced within inside, inside the capillary, what happens is water and other substances such as carbon dioxide and waste products will enter back into the bloodstream into the capillary because the oncotic pressure here is higher than that of the hydrostatic pressure. Now, only about ninety percent of the fluid is going to return back into the capillary. Um, due to this process, due to the oncotic pressure being higher than that of the hydrostatic pressure. The remaining 10% of the fluid will drain into the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is really good for um, fighting off anything within the blood that shouldn't be there. So that 10% of fluid that drains off into the lymphatic system um, will pass things like the lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes um, contain within them um, lymphocytes and it, these lymphocytes are a type of white blood cells so what will happen is any bacteria or foreign particles that are within the blood or within in here within the lymph uh, will be um, got rid of by the lymphocytes uh, and then the, the lymph will then drain back into your chest cavity and go back into your blood um, so this helps to clean the blood so the lymphatic system helps to cleanse the blood of any unwanted pathogens or foreign material so that's basically how um, tissue fluid is formed and the tissue fluid comes back into the into the blood. Uh, you do need to be aware of what is present within each part and the differences between blood, tissue fluid and lymph composition. So we're going to pause the video and have a go at filling out this table. But here are the answers coming up now. So I'm not going to go through that table. We just need to know those answers. Um, now with this, you can get quite a couple of suggest questions. Uh, so for example, if someone has a high blood pressure, that would affect the hydrostatic pressure. And if someone has a higher hydrostatic pressure than normal, that means that too much fluid would leave the capillary at the arterial end of the capillary. But also the difference between the oncotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure at the venual end will not be as drastic. So therefore, I'm going to get more fluid retention within my tissues, which can lead to edema. I've also seen questions here linking into quartial core disease. Quartial core disease is where I have um, too little uh, proteins within my diet. So therefore, I don't have enough large proteins within my blood to cause a, a, an oncotic pressure. So therefore, again, I don't get enough uh, fluid returning into my tissues due to that oncotic pressure not being as as low as it needs to be in order to draw that fluid back in so therefore I get a swelling around um, the belly so do be aware there can be a lot of suggest questions here but guys good luck with your exams